everyone, Rachel Prophet here with another video in my Getting Started series. I am a white female with long reddish brown hair that's up in a ponytail today. I am wearing a pink t-shirt with the Colorado logo on it, and I am in my office as usual with my epic sticker wall behind me. In today's video, we're going to focus in on organization hierarchies, picking up where we left off last time with operating units. So in this video, we're going to talk through how to take those operating units and organize them into a hierarchy. So let's go ahead and switch over to the software. So now I'm inside of Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations, and we're going to go ahead and navigate into the Organization Administration module. In this module, you'll find all of the things related to setting up operating units, organization hierarchies, position hierarchies, and a lot of other related functions that apply to your entire organization. What I'm going to do is start by clicking on Organization Hierarchies. This will open up a new page where you can see the list of all of the organization hierarchies that you have in your system. Because I'm using demo data, I already have a number of these. If you're starting from a new blank environment, this list will be empty. To create a new organization hierarchy, you're simply going to click the new icon, enter in a name, and next you'll need to select what purposes or types you want to assign to your hierarchy. So to do this, I'm going to click on assign purpose. This will open up a new screen where I can see a list of all of the organization hierarchy purposes. You can see down the left hand side, we have a variety of purposes. These purposes are standard to the system and the same list of purposes will always be available in every environment. If you want a hierarchy to be assigned to a particular purpose, for example, I want my new hierarchy to be used with security, I can simply click on the security purpose on the left, and then in the assigned hierarchies pane, I can click add. This will open up a dialog where I can see the list of hierarchies. I can select the hierarchy I want, and then click OK. When you select a particular organization hierarchy, you can see on the bottom half of the page, there is a fast tab here that is called allowed organization types. This pane will display a list of organization or operating unit types that will be permitted in this particular organization hierarchy. So when I use the security purpose, I can select departments, cost centers, value streams, business units, retail channel, and legal entity. However, in another example, if I select the centralized payments hierarchy type, you can see that the only organization type that's allowed here is legal entity. This is because when I'm setting up in a centralized payment hierarchy, I'm only defining the relationship between your legal entities. There's no limit to the number of organization hierarchies that you can create. And there's not a limit to the number of hierarchies that you can assign to each purpose, but you'll want to think through that process. Just because you can create an unlimited amount of hierarchies doesn't mean that you should. So I'm going to close this window down now that I've assigned my hierarchy to the security purpose. If we return back to this page and we click on the refresh icon, you can now see that the security purpose is assigned to our hierarchy. Now I'm ready to start designing this hierarchy. To do this, I'll need to click on the view button in the action pane at the top. This will open up a new window. This is where you can see the details of your organization hierarchy. When you're first starting a brand new hierarchy, there'll be nothing included in it. So you'll need to create some nodes and decide what the structure is. Typically, you'll select one type of entity to be at the the top of your hierarchy, another type of entity or operating unit to be at the second level, and a third type to be at the third level, and so on. However, your business requirements might require that you're creating a hierarchy of departments and you're putting top level departments on level two and the sub departments at level three. So levels two and levels three both contain departments. There's no right or wrong answer to how you design your operating units, but you'll need to think about the business requirements and how you will use them. To get started, you'll need to click on edit. This will allow you to start making changes to the hierarchy. You'll need to start by using the insert button and then select 
the type of operating unit that you want to add. It's very typical that legal entities will be at the top of your organization hierarchy. So I'm going to choose legal entity and I'm going to choose the Dynamics 365 unboxed entity that we created in our first getting started video. Now you can see a new box has been added to my hierarchy designer. When that box is selected, you can see that it's highlighted blue. And at the bottom of the page, I can see the details about what type of operating unit this is, the search name, and so on. Now, when you're ready to start adding subnodes underneath a particular node, you can highlight the selected node and click insert. So for my example, I wanna add a few business units underneath my Dynamics 365 unboxed legal entity. So I'll select business unit and a dialog will open and I want to add in auto with the Dynamics 365 unbox still highlighted. I'm going to click insert again and choose business unit and I'll click on home. I'll do this a third time, selecting business unit again and I will select fashion. There's no limit to the number of nodes that you add at any particular level. Um, in your hierarchy. However, it is important to note that the top level can only include one. If I now put my cursor on auto, you can see that it is highlighted blue and I can see the details about this operating unit in the bottom of my page. If you click on that node, it will put the focus to that node. And this is useful if there's a lot of levels below in your particular hierarchy. If you want to move the focus back, you can simply click on the parent node for Dynamics 365 Unboxed. Let's go ahead and add a few cost centers underneath Auto. So with this node selected, I will click Insert, and this time choosing Cost Center. Here you'll see a list of all the cost centers that I have created. And I'll add in Production. I'll select the node for Auto again, click Insert, and choose Cost Center and I will choose Logistics. There's no limit again to the number of nodes that you add any on one particular node. So for this example, if I also wanted Logistics to appear underneath Home, I would not be able to do this. So if I select Home and I select Cost Center, you'll notice that Logistics is not in the list. And this is because it already exists in the hierarchy. Hierarchy should always maintain a one-to-one -one relationship and any given operating unit type or organization type should only exist once in the hierarchy. If you needed to model this type of relationship, you'll want to consider either flipping your hierarchy upside down and putting logistics at the top and then selecting all of the business units that can go with that particular cost center. Or uh, you can look at creating multiple hierarchies um, where it's a single line down that particular hierarchy where legal entity is still at the top, home is second, and then logistics you know, would be third. And in a different hierarchy, you have Dynamics 365 Unboxed, Auto, and Logistics. I'll go ahead and add a few things in here. So I'm going to choose Outlet, and I'll also add in Quality Control here. So now we've got some additional notes. Obviously, you can keep on going and creating as many levels in your hierarchy as are needed for your business requirements. If you want to move the nodes in one area to another area, so for example, let's say I want to move Outlet over to the Fashion node, I can highlight that node and click on Cut, select the Fashion node, and then click on Paste, and now that node has been moved. If you wanted to move an entire node, for example, let's say I want to move Fashion and Outlet to be underneath Home, you can do this as well by simply clicking Cut, selecting where you want to move it to, and selecting Paste. Now you can see Fashion has been moved underneath here, and if I move my focus to Fashion, you can see that Outlet is still underneath there. I'll click to move my focus back to the parent node. When you're done creating an organization hierarchy, it's important to note that you'll need to publish it. There's a few important things to know about publishing. When you publish a hierarchy, 
A dialog box will open where you'll need to enter in an effective date. An organization hierarchy can only be effective as of right now or a date in the future. It is not possible to make a organization hierarchy effective in a past date, or if I publish this as of, say, the first of next month, I cannot create another hierarchy or make more changes to it and publish those changes prior to the first of next month. Typically, you'll want to select today um, when you're uh, activating a, a brand new hierarchy so that it becomes effective immediately. If you're making changes that are going to be effective in the future, select those dates, but make sure you go through a process of validating it because you cannot undo the publish after you've completed it. You might also want to type in some notes and describe the change that you're making, and when you're ready, you'll click OK. Once the organization hierarchy has been published, you can see that you receive a dialog that lets you know it's been published as of the date you selected, and you can simply click close. When you're finished, you can close down that window and now you've created a new organization hierarchy. In our next video, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into the various organization hierarchy types. So stay tuned and be sure to like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time on Dynamics 365 Unboxed.